The Good Morrow. I wonder by my troth what thou and I did till we loved. Were we not weaned till then, but sucked on country pleasures childishly, or snorted we in the seven sleepers' den? Twas so. But this all pleasures fancies be. If ever any beauty I did see which I desired and got, twas but a dream of thee. And now good morrow to our waking souls, which watch not one another out of fear. For love all love of other sights controls, and makes one little room an everywhere. Let sea discoverers to new worlds have gone, let maps to other worlds on worlds have shown. Let us possess one world, each hath one and is one. My face in thine eye, thine in mine appears, and true plain hearts do in the faces rest. Where can we find two better hemispheres without sharp north, without declining west? Whatever dies was not mixed equally. If our two loves be one, or thou and I love so alike that none can slacken, none can die. Song Go and catch a falling star, get with child a mandrake root. Tell me where all past years are, or who cleft the devil's foot. Teach me to hear mermaids singing, or to keep off envy's stinging, and find what wind serves to advance an honest mind. If thou beest born to strange sights, things invisible to see, ride ten thousand days and nights, till age snow white hairs on thee. Thou, when thou returnst, wilt tell me all strange wonders that befell thee, and swear nowhere lives a woman true and fair. If thou find'st one, let me know, such a pilgrimage were sweet. Yet do not, I would not go, though at next door we might meet. Though she were true when you met her, and last till you write your letter, yet she will be false ere I come to two or three. The Sun Rising Busy old fool, unruly son, why dost thou thus, through windows and through curtains, call on us? Must to thy motions lover's seasons run? Saucy pedantic wretch, go chide late schoolboys and sour prentices. Go tell court huntsmen that the king will ride. Call country ants to harvest offices. Love all alike, no season knows nor climb nor hours, days, months, which are the rags of time. Thy beams so reverent and strong, why shouldst thou think? I could eclipse and cloud them with a wink, but that I would not lose her sight so long. If her eyes have not blinded thine, look, and to-morrow late tell me, whether both the Indias of spice and mine be where thou left'st them, or lie here with me. Ask for those kings whom thou sawest yesterday, and thou shalt hear, all here in one bed lay. She's all states, and all princes I, nothing else is. Princes do but play us, compared to this all honours mimic, all wealth alchemy. Thou, son, art half as happy as we, in that the world's contracted thus. Thine age asks ease, and since thy duties be to warm the world, that's done in warming us. Shine here to us, and thou art everywhere. This bed thy centre is, these walls thy sphere. The Legacy when last I died, and dear, I die as often as from thee I go, though it be but an hour ago, and lovers' hours be full eternity, I can remember yet that I something did say, and something did bestow. 
Though I be dead, which sent me, I might be mine own executor and legacy. I heard me say, Tell her anon that myself, that is you, not I, did kill me. And when I felt me die, I bid me send my heart when I was gone. But I, alas, could there find none. When I had ripped and searched where heart should lie, it killed me again, that I, who still was true in life, in my last will should cousin you. Yet I found something like a heart, but colours it and corners had. It was not good, it was not bad, it was entire to none, and few had part. As good as could be made by art, it seemed, and therefore for our loss be sad. I mean to send that heart instead of mine, but, oh, no man could hold it, for it was thine. The Anniversary All kings and all their favourites, all glory of honours, beauties, wits, the sun itself, which makes time, as they pass, is elder by a year now than it was when thou and I first one another saw. All other things to their destruction draw, only our love hath no decay. This no tomorrow hath, nor yesterday. Running it never runs from us away, but truly keeps his first last, everlasting day. Two graves must hide thine and my course. If one might, death were no divorce. Alas, as well as other princes, we, who prince enough in one another be, must leave at last in death these eyes and ears, oft fed with true oaths, and with sweet salt tears. But souls where nothing dwells but love, all other thoughts being inmates, then shall prove this, or a love increased there above, when bodies to their graves, souls from their graves remove. And then we shall be truly blessed, but now no more than all the rest, here upon earth we are kings, and none but we can be such kings, nor of such subjects be. Who is so safe as we, where none can do treason to us, except one of us too? True and false fears let us refrain. Let us live nobly, and live, and add again years and years unto years, till we attain to write three score. This is the second of our reign. Love's Alchemy Some that have deeper digged love's mine than I say where his centric happiness doth lie. I have loved and got and told, but should I love yet tell till I were old, I should not find that hidden mystery. Oh, tis imposture all. And as no chemic yet the elixir got, but glorifies his pregnant pot, if by the way to him befall some odoriferous thing or medicinal, so lovers dream a rich and long delight, but get a winter-seeming summer's night. Our ease, our thrift, our honour and our day, shall we for this vain bubble shadow pay? Ends love in this, that my man can be as happy as I can, if he can endure the short scorn of a bridegroom's play. That loving wretch that swears, tis not the body's marry, but the mind's, which he in her angelic finds, would swear as justly that he hears in that day's rude horse minstrelsy the spheres. Hope not for mind in women, 
At their best, sweetness and wit they are, but mummy possessed. The Apparition When by thy scorn, O murderess, I am dead, and that thou thinkst thee free from all solicitation from me, then shall my ghost come to thy bed, and thee, feigned vestal, in worse arms shall see. Then thy sick taper will begin to wink, and he whose thou art then, being tired before, will, if thou stir or pinch to wake him, think thou callst for more, and in false sleep will from thee shrink. And then, poor aspen wretch, neglected thou, bathed in a cold, quicksilver sweat wilt lie, a verier ghost than I. What I will say I will not tell thee now, lest that preserve thee. And since my love is spent, I'd rather thou shouldst painfully repent than by my threatenings rest still innocent. The Broken Heart he is stark mad, whoever says that he hath been in love an hour, yet not that love so soon decays, but that it can ten in less space devour. Who will believe me if I swear that I have had the plague a year? Who would not laugh at me if I should say I saw a flash of powder burn a day? Ah, what a trifle is a heart if once into love's hands it come! All other griefs allow a part to other griefs, and ask themselves but some. They come to us, but us love draws. He swallows us and never chores. By him, as by chain shot, whole ranks do die. He is the tyrant pike, our hearts the fry. If twere not so, what did become of my heart when I first saw thee? I brought a heart into the room, but from the room I carried none with me. If it had gone to thee, I know mine would have taught thine heart to show more pity unto me. But love, alas, at one first blow did shiver it as glass. Yet nothing can to nothing fall, nor any place be empty quite. Therefore I think my breast hath all those pieces still, though they be not unite. And now, as broken glasses show a hundred lesser faces, so my rags of heart can like, wish, and adore. But after one such love, can love no more. Love's Deity I long to talk with some old lover's ghost who died before the God of love was born. I cannot think that he who then loved most sunk so low as to love one which did scorn. But since this God produced a destiny, and that vice-nature custom lets it be, I must love her that loves not me. Sure they which made him God meant not so much, nor he in his young Godhead practised it. But when an even flame two hearts did touch, his office was indulgently to fit actives to passives. Correspondency only his subject was, it cannot be love till I love her who loves me. But every modern god will now extend his vast prerogative as far as Jove, to rage, to lust, to write to, to commend, all is the purlieu of the god of love. Oh, were we wakened by this tyranny to ungod this child again, it could not be I should love her who loves not me. Rebel and atheist too, why murmur I, as though I felt the worst that love could do? 
Love may make me leave loving, or might try a deeper plague to make her love me too, which, since she loves before, I'm loath to see. Falsehood is worse than hate, and that must be if she whom I love should love me. The Funeral Whoever comes to shroud me, do not harm nor question much that subtle wreath of hair which crowns my arm, the mystery, the sign you must not touch. For it is my outward soul, viceroy to that which unto heaven being gone will leave this to control and keep these limbs, her provinces, from dissolution. For if the sinewy thread my brain lets fall through every part can tie those parts and make me one of all, those hairs which upward grew and strength and art have from a better brain can better do it. Except she meant that I by this should know my pain, as prisoners then are manacled when they are condemned to die, Whate'er she meant by it, bury it with me, for since I am love's martyr, it might breed idolatry if into other hands these relics came, as twas humility to afford to it all that a soul can do. So tis some bravery that since you would have none of me, I bury some of you. The Relic When my grave is broke up again, some second guest to entertain, for graves have learnt that womanhead to be to more than one a bed, and he that digs it spies a bracelet of bright hair about the bone. Will not he let us alone, and think that there a loving couple lies, who thought that this device might be some way to make their souls at the last busy day meet at this grave and make a little stay. If this fall in a time or land where mass devotion doth command, then he that digs us up will bring us to the bishop or the king to make us relics. Then thou shalt be a Mary Magdalene and I a something else thereby. All women shall adore us, and some men. And since at such time miracles are sought, I would have that age by this paper taught what miracles we harmless lovers wrought. First we loved well and faithfully, yet knew not what we loved nor why. Difference of sex we never knew, no more than guardian angels do. Coming and going we perchance might kiss, but not between those meals. Our hands ne'er touch the seals which nature, injured by late law, sets free. These miracles we did. But now, alas, all measure and all language I should pass. Should I tell what a miracle she was? Elegy number 17, Elegy on his mistress. By our first strange and fatal interview, by all desires which thereof did ensue, by our long starving hopes, by that remorse which my words masculine persuasive force begot in thee, and by the memory of hurts which spies and rivals threatened me, I calmly beg. But by thy father's wrath, by all pains which want and divorcement hath, I conjure thee, and all the oaths which I and thou have sworn to seal joint constancy, here I unswear and overswear them thus. Thou shalt not love by ways so dangerous. Temper, O fair love, love's impetuous rage, be my true mistress still, 
not my feigned page. I'll go, and by thy kind leave, leave behind thee, only worthy to nurse in my mind, thirst to come back. O, oh, if thou die before, my soul from other lands to thee shall soar. Thy else almighty beauty cannot move rage from the seas, nor thy love teach them love, nor tame wild Boreas harshness. Thou hast read how roughly he in pieces shivered fair Orithea, whom he swore he loved. Fall ill or good, tis madness to have proved dangers unurged. Feed on this flattery, that absent lovers one in the other be. Dissemble nothing, not a boy, not change thy body's habit nor mind. Be not strange to thyself only. All will spy in thy face a blushing, womanly, discovering grace. Richly clothed apes are called apes, and as soon eclipsed as bright we call the moon the moon. Men of France, changeable chameleons, spittles of diseases, shops of fashions, love's fuelers, and the rightest company of players which upon the world's stage be will quickly know thee, and no less, alas, the indifferent Italian, as we pass his warm land, well content to think thee page, will hunt thee with such lust and hideous rage as Lot's fair guests were vexed. But none of these, nor spongy hydroptic Dutch, shall thee displease, if thou stay here. O oh, stay here, for for thee England is only a worthy gallery to walk in expectation, till from thence our greatest king call thee to his presence. When I am gone, dream me some happiness, nor let thy looks our long-hid love confess, nor praise, nor dispraise me, nor bless, nor curse openly love's force, nor in bed fright thy nurse with midnight startings, crying out, O, oh, O oh, nurse, O oh, my love is slain, I saw him go o'er the white Alps alone. I saw him, I, assailed, fight, taken, stabbed, bleed, fall, and die. Augur me better chance, except dread Jove think it enough for me to have had thy love.